Hi and welcome to this week's Essential Lightroom video tutorial. In this week's episode, I'm going to take you through and show you how we can recreate this effect we have on screen. It's a sort of desaturated matte effect that works really well with subjects that are backlit with a nice soft light. So I'm going to take you through step by step how to create this effect. As always, stick around to the end because you've got a few extra techniques and tips that are not included in the free preset, which you can download from the description below. Well, without further ado, let's take a look at how to do this effect right now. So this is our starting point and you can see it's already a really nice image. It's well backlit, it's got some lovely skin tones and we're going to just make it a little bit nicer with this retro kind of effect. Like I said, the preset is available in the link in the description below and stick around to the end of the video because there's a few extra steps I'm going to show you that are not included in the preset. So let's take a look at what we're going to do. As always, I'm going to go through from the top to the bottom in the develop module. So we'll start off with the basic, basics panel. Now this image has obviously gone through and been processed beforehand. It's a stock image, so you can download this if you want or one like it and work along with me. But what we've got is an already well processed image. It's nice and saturated. We want to take it to the opposite end. So I'm not going to worry too much about things like the highlights and shadows. It all looks pretty good. Remember, every image needs its own adjustments and no preset. It's going to be one click and you're happy with it and nothing needs to be changed. So they're just starting points. Okay, so let's go through. I'm going to leave all of the options for the temperature, exposure, and so on. All those things are fine for this particular image. What I am going to concentrate on is the presence section, because what I want to do is give it a more of a soft glow, and I want to desaturate most of the colors in it. We'll then go through later on and just adjust the colors I want to sort of punch out a little bit to make everything stand out really nicely. So to start off with, let's go to the clarity slider and I want to create a sort of soft focus effect to this. So if we take it to the right hand side, we'll increase the contrast, make it more punchy. If we take it to the left hand side, we'll start to soften it down, which gives a really nice effect. So I'm going to take this to around about minus 30. That gives a really nice soft glow to the skin, smooths any imperfections you may have in it and gives it a sort of really nice retro kind of glow. Next up, we're going to drop to the vibrance section. We're going to reduce the vibrance so the warmer colors in the image will start to be desaturated. We're going to go down, take the vibrance down to about minus 20. And then we're going to take the saturation to control all of the colors in the image and desaturate everything. So let's take those down to about minus 25, so we're around there. So you can see that's now really desaturated everything. So there's our starting point. So we've got a nice, soft, focused, desaturated look. So let's jump over to the tone curve section and this is where the main part of this overall effect is going to take place. So the main thing we want to do at this point is take the blacks and crush them. And by crush them I basically mean where blacks would be black in a modern camera and a modern image. In older film, especially with certain types of film, the black was never quite black. It was a sort of dark grey and looked a little bit sort of semi-negative. But we're going to recreate that effect. So what I'm going to do is on the tone curve we're going to make a couple of extra points, just making sure we're in the point curve mode. You can just check that by clicking on this little symbol on the right hand side. You can see there's the normal mode. If we click, we'll go into point curve mode. So that allows us to directly influence the curve by adding points in there and dragging those points around. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a couple of extra points in there. And once we've added those extra points, then we can now start to influence the tonal information in the image. So what we're going to do is if we take a look at those points, the bottom left hand corner is the darkest tones in the image. The center is the mid tones and the top right hand side are the highlights. So if you want to crush those blacks, we want to make them sort of more sort of negative effect, take the blackness out of them. We can grab this bottom left hand corner point and we can start to lift that up. And if you notice the darker areas, if we go a bit crazy, you'll see they no longer look black. They look more like a slightly sort of semi-negative effect. So that's obviously way too much. So we're going to bring that back down to around about, right about that kind of point. Now the reason we add the extra points in there, especially with this one, is because it locks that information there. And we only get a slight adjustment to any point beyond that. If we didn't have that in there, we'd find we'd have a bigger curve and it wouldn't have the effect that we wanted. So once we've done that, we're going to do a slight adjustment to the highlights. We're just going to come up to the top right hand corner. We're going to drop those down just a little bit. So it'll take the white and make it less white and sort of take it to a slight gray effect. So let's take a look at the before and after. There's the before. 
there's the after. So you can see we've now taken out some of that darker information and we've given it a sort of more matte effect. So that's all we're going to do with the tone curve. We can come in and tweak if we need to later on, but that's looking pretty good for now. So as we've done that, we're going to come down to the HSL section and we're going to take a look at tweaking some of the colors that I want to punch back up a little bit in this particular image. Now remember, the preset will have these alterations, but your image may not require the same tweaks. So every image requires its own adjustments. So what we're going to do is we're going to come down to the saturation and we're going to simply come down to the reds and the oranges. I want to warm the image back up just ever so slightly. So we're going to take the reds, we're going to give those a little bit of a boost around 20, 25, somewhere around there. And we're going to do the same with the oranges to bring up some of that sort of warmer tones of the skin. And we'll take that to about the same point, around plus 25, somewhere around there. If we do a before and after, you'll see there's the before, there's the after. It's pretty subtle at this point in time, but it brings out those sort of warmth in the neck and the face and brings out some of those more sort of warm skin tones. Gives it a little bit more balance in there. So once we've done that, the next thing we're going to move on to is making some slight adjustments to the luminance. Now, these are really quite subtle adjustments. We're going to take the orange and we're going to drop the luminance down on that to about negative 10, 12, somewhere around that kind of point. And we're just going to tweak the yellow just a little bit. Now, this might be a small, really small amount, but just some slight adjustments. That's looking pretty good. That's kind of where I want it. So let's take a look at the before and after with these HSL adjustments. There's before. This after. So you can see all we've done is been bring a little bit of the sort of warmer, vibrant colors back into it without influencing any of the other tones in the image. And that's it. That's all I want to do in the HSL section. So once we've done that, we could leave the preset there if we wanted to. That looks great. But what we're going to do in this now is we're going to come down to the effect section. We're going to take the dehaze and we're just going to give that a little bit of a bump because I want to bring back just a little bit of the contrast back in there. So we can use the dehaze, probably about plus seven, plus ten, somewhere around there. It really is a small tweak. I'm going to take the vignette and we're going to bring that down just a slight amount, just to give us sort of something to draw the attention into the image itself. I probably want to adjust the midpoint as well, just to tweak that ever so slightly. So let's take a look at before and after. So you can see it just draws your attention into the image, darkens those edges down, and really helps you focus on the overall image. And that really is all there is to this particular setup. Really, really easy effect, but gives a really nice look. So let's take a look at a before and after so we can see where we started and where we've now ended up. So there's our final result, and let's take a look. So there's our starting point on the left-hand side. Like I said, already a really nice, warm, colorful, backlit image. And then we've got our sort of matte affected, sort of really desaturated look on the right-hand side, which I think gives a really nice classic kind of look. Well, that's all there is to this video tutorial. I hope you found it useful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button to be kept up to date with all the content we add every single week. If any comments, questions or feedback, pop those in the comment section below. We read everything you post and try to answer as many questions as possible. If you want the free preset, remember the link is in the description below where you can go and download that from the Essential Lightroom website along with a range of other completely free presets that you can use in Lightroom. Well, until next time, take care.